Hello everybody, my name is John Anderson. I am the owner of Pop Culture Archives. We are an affiliate on kbed.com. Welcome to our June wholesale auction. We have a number of great lots and we wanted to take a video and go over some of the lots that we have, uh, primarily our sports cards lots, and provide you some extra information. Um, let's get it started off. Uh, this is lot number 230. Um, this is a 19... I, we're calling it a partial team set because there are many stars. So it's 1967 tops. Um, so let's uh, open this up. These cards are going to be generally between excellent and X mint. Um, approximately a uh, five out of six on a ten on a ten point scale. So we'll take a look at some stars. We've got Cesar Tovar, Jim Perry. Zolio Versailles, Jim Kitty Cat. Um, so you can see here, hopefully, um, corners are going to be uh, slightly rounded. Um, edges are going to have some um, small defects. Centering is actually pretty nice on these, uh, for the most part. Uh, Bob Allison, Earl Batty. And then we have some um, extra commons from that set. And you'll be able to see the rest of these commons in the listing. Um, and as Dean Chance, it's kind of cool. Uh, this is Rod Crew's rookie card. Rod Crew is not in this uh, set. And Harmon Killebrew is missing as well. Um, but this is a great opportunity to own actually a higher grade uh, card from this, year, uh, this year's set. Um, so take a look at that. Let me get this back in the bag. Um, this will be a little bit longer of a video. Um, I am going in number order. So if you're interested in a card lot, um, you can skip ahead and um, get to a lot that you want, uh, to, want to look at. All right, lot number 231. Um, I'm actually not going to go through these cards. Um, there are some stars in here, uh, but I got, I got some tape on here. Let me see if I can do this quickly. Oh, okay, I was able to do it quick enough. Alright, so, um, let's do this real quick. There you go. So, these are generally going to be uh, poor to fair condition. Um, probably a 1 to a 3 out of 10. Uh, sometimes you might catch a 4 in here as well. Um, or an errant 5. Uh, so, let's go through some of the... Some of the stars, Jim Perry's in the set, Cesar Tovar again, Bob Allison, it's a nice Bob Allison. Um, the Bob Allison is actually, has pretty nice corners, so kind of rounded in this corner. Um, decent centering, so this is a real nice one. Uh, this is a Zolio, isn't it? Or, uh, Camilo Pascal, uh, rookie card. That actually has pretty decent corners. But there's going to be some surface issues on that one. Uh, nice Tony Oliva. Um, that one has pretty rounded corners. It's probably um, on the lower end of the scale. Um, a two or a three. Uh, Bob Allison. Again, and then the rest are going to be, uh, you know, minor players and or commons in the set. Again, you can look on the listing and you'll, uh, you'll be able to see every single card. In this lot, uh, we did not take any general photos. We made sure that you could see every card that was in this lot. That is lot number 231. Lot number 232 is, um, okay, so this is a collection that came in the shop. Um, this was a uh, twin collection, a uh, very heavy twin. Uh, they had a large number of um, in-person autographs. Uh, we felt that this collection had, um, the, the autograph, we feel have a high level of authentic authenticity to them. However, we did notice that some cards were, um, purchased at Shinders, so from a third party dealer, or, um, they could have gotten some through, through the mail. But there was a large number of uh, what I call Twin Fest autos. These are reoccurring Twin Fest guests um, over the course of the years. Seems like this collection was built up over uh, maybe the last 20 years or so. 
Um, so it's going to be lot number 232 to the Sam Melee. A Lenny Green to the signature right here. And a Dick Stigman. So these are going to be the three cards. They're all from the 1960s. Uh, we divided our the autographs into uh, decades. So this would be the 60s lot, so three cards from the 60s. Lot number 232. Lot number 233, these are all going to be cards from the 70s. So, um, I think these are generally lower left, so the centuries here in pen. Um, there's going to be a variety of, uh, of implements used for signatures. Uh, lots of pen, ballpoint pen, and then lots of uh, marker. Uh, Jim Perry, that's a nice Jim Perry. Uh, the card is it's a little cut off at the bottom. So that's going to be a miscut on that one. Uh, Louis Taint, that's a very nice, uh, very nice card, 1970 top. Dan Ford. And the rest are going to be more common players. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a nice ten-card lot of Minnesota Twins, all from the 1970s, all signed on card. All right, next one, 234. Uh, this is going to be our 1980s lot. So the 1980 lot, we got Billy Bean here, Tim Tufel, Pete Wilson. Here's a nice Frank Viola, uh, very strong signature, um, uh, very bold black marker. Uh, another Billy Bean. Looks like they hit him up in the Twin Fest line quite a lot. Mark Salas, Bob Wilfong, Gary Ward. Gary Ward was a um, very good player for the Minnesota Twins in the early 80s. He's one of our stars. So that would be our uh, 1980s lot. So that'll go from 1980 to 1989. So uh, that's lot number 234. Uh, lot number 235 will be our 90s to current lot. I don't think there's a lot in the last 10 years or so. Um, I think it pretty much tops out very early 2000. Got Todd Walker, Shannon Stewart. He was a star for the Twins for a few years. Matt LaCroix. Rick Aguilera. Kind of cool. It's when it was with the Mets before he got traded to the Twins. Um, I can't even read that. Ryan Mills. Uh, Brian Harper, um, 1991 World Series star, Cordova, uh, some Mulholland. So some of these are going to be former Twins players that um, are in different uniforms in these cards. Mike Trombley, uh, I believe this is a Nick Punto. Uh, it's going to be a Nick Punto on Top Heritage. Top Heritage is a very desirable set to have in-person autographs on. So that's a very nice card to get. Um, who am I looking at here? Stu Cleburne. Looks like he was a coach in, uh, for the AAA team. Uh, Greg Gagne on a 1991 uh, top card. So that's, that's a nice uh, choice of card. Tim Tiffey, Latroy Hawkins. Um, top prospect for us. Uh, didn't quite pan out. Uh, There's a nice Jim Cott. Uh, what I like about this is uh, the way the card was designed, it was almost begging for an autograph, so they uh, chose a really nice card for that. Then Marty Cordova rookie, a Bob Oldest, this would be with the Washington Senators. Um, this is not a uh, vintage card, uh, this is from Topps Archive, which is a modern card from the early 2000s, and Jason Miller. So those would be our 90s, and that is lot number 235. All right, lot number 236, we have some hockey autographs that came from the same collection. Um, not a lot of hockey, just a little bit. Um, so we put all the Minnesota North Stars in one lot. This is lot number 236. I, I am not good at, uh, <laughs> at hockey, but we got Dennis Hexel, Neil Broden, he was on the uh, 1980 Olympic team. Uh, Ron Zanussi. 
Uh, John Paul Parisi, he's the father of Zach Parisi, who is currently on the Minnesota Wild and Minnesota native. Uh, this is a really nice card. It's a 1972-1973 card. And uh, Pete, well, you can read it. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> if I can read it, I can't pronounce it. So, um, nice five-card lot. Um, couple of native Minnesota Minnesotan uh, legends in that lot. So that's a really nice lot. Uh, next up, we got, um, we'll go through this just real quick. This is uh, really cool. This is a uh, 1983 um, top star lot, and it just features uh, the rookie card of Tony Gwynn, the rookie card of Ryan Sandberg, and the second year card of Carl Jr. Jr. Uh, that is lot 245. Um, those are three of the uh, biggest cards in that set. Uh, you don't have to buy the whole set. You can just buy the slot and get those uh, key cards within that set. Uh, this is lot number 246. Whoops. Uh, Cal Ripken Jr. Tops Rookie, 1982. Um, a little off-centered. Uh, have a couple ding, but overall in good condition. Uh, I'm not sure I'd venture a grade on this one. Uh, maybe a 6 or a 7. So I guess I just did. <laughs> Uh, here's a nice Tony Gwynn Donruss rookie, 1983 Donruss rookie. Uh, Tony Gwynn, the uh, perennial all-star. Here is a, uh, this is lot number 250. And this is a uh, Kirby Puckett 1985 top uh, lot. So we're going to get five 1985 top Kirby Puckett rookie cards. And I'll go through them real quick. See if I can... So I'll have pretty decent centering on them. Um, you know, corners are generally in good condition. Uh, really nice uh, lot of Curry Pocket rookies. Um, next up, we have we did uh, one um, one lot for each card. Um, we had four different Jim Cott vintage uh, cards that were signed. Lot two hundred fifty one. This is a uh, 1971 Tops. This signature is uh, right here, right in the corner. Uh, lot 252. This is a 1970 Tops. And we've got the signature right in the middle. And these are all in ballpoint pen. My guess is they were acquired at the same time. Um, one of these... So the 1970 Tops does have a pretty significant crease. Um, going down the middle from top to bottom um, ends about right here. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it on screen, but I did want to note that um, that's going to be a crease that's hard to pick up in pictures, and we always want to try and convey the best information we can to the people bidding on our lot. Uh, this is a great uh, 1963 top Jim Cott um, signed on his arm right here. And uh, this one got up uh, off center quite a bit, about 90-10. Um, but again, 1963. And last up is a 1969. I think this is probably the best copy. A uh, very light card, so the signature is very bold on this card. It's centered uh, pretty decent for a 69. And the corners are generally um, pretty good. However, on the bottom, we do have some rounding on the corners. And that last one was lot number 254. So lot 269, we won't go through this because you'll be able to see the pictures in the lot. Uh, so this is just kind of a fun lot. These are uh, uh, lot 269, these are 25 different Harmon Killebrew cards. N none of these are vintage, these are all um, early 2000s. Um, most of them are early 2000s, you're going to see some 90s in there. Uh, real fun lot. Uh, these generally sell, you know, a dollar or two a piece. Um, uh, but it's kind of cool to get 25 different ones in one lot. And then we did the same for Rod Carew, lot number 270. Again, 25 cards, all different, all from uh, somewhat modern set. Um, some are reprints, and then some are just going to be um, part of that modern set. Uh, next up, we got lot 287. This is going to be a Vern Benson. It does have the JSA certificate with it. Um, he was, uh, uh, this is not a vintage card, this is a reprint from a set called Topps Archive. I can't remember 
the year. It's probably early 2000s. Um, so got the GSA third on that. And then lot 288, JW Porter, same thing. Got a J JSA certificate on it. Um, so what happened was this had a more generic company and they resubmitted it to JSA. JSA is a top level uh, authenticator of autographs. Um, so this is a, a very reliable um, authentication. Uh, next up, 289. Uh, this is a real fun lot um, for you 90s uh, kids out there. Three card lot of Ken Griffey Jr., 1989 Bowman, 1989 Donruss, and 1989 Fleer. Um, knocked out three, three of Ken Griffey Jr.'s rookie cards, all different. All right. Next up, we got another autograph lot. Um, so these are a little different. Um, these don't come from that collection. Uh, these came in various collections. Um, so we want you to take a look at these cards, um, make your own determination as to authenticity. If we ever get an autograph that we think is just bad and wrong, we won't offer that for sale. These are going to be autographs of unknown origin. So they came in a bigger collection. Maybe they had two or three in-person autographs. Um, usually player selection will determine your level of risk. So um, John Casey and John Cullen, very low level that uh, they would not be authentic. And Jeremy Roenick maybe a little higher, but not a um, not a commonly um, fake signature. So we got a John Casey here, a John Cullen, and a Jeremy Roenick. And so that's lot number 290. And again, these come from just various sources. Um, and different collections that came in in uh, the month of May. And last, well, second to last, we have another lot. This is uh, the same as the last one. These are basketball. Uh, they came in, or actually, I'm sorry, they're mixed sports. So football, basketball, baseball. Um, again, these are cards that just came in various collections, uh, maybe one or two cards per collection. Um, we don't know the origin of it, so we ask, you know, before bidding, uh, make sure you do your research. Uh, Gary Anderson, um, we don't need to talk more about him. Tom Kramer on 86 Tops, that's nice. Uh, Keith Ather Atherton um, on 85 Tops. Dave Hoppin. Dave Hoppin. So that Dave Hoppin might have been most likely a through the mail. Autographs. A lot of times people like to send two cards um, and say one card is for the player to keep and a lot of times the player will send back both. Uh, it's going to be Greg Sutton on a top gold card. Uh, Nick McLuth and then two more Greg Sutton. Again, this is probably uh, they saw them at one location or um, it's a through the mail where they sent multiple cards and got back multiple cards. Um, so the, the player selection on here, there's um, a high likelihood that they're all authentic. Um, but we did want to let you know that it, they're from unknown sources. And last up, what we want to talk about was uh, this lot. This is lot number 279. We estimate, um, I think we estimated about 1,200 cards. It's all Minnesota Twins, except for this, uh, where, we, where we added in a uh, nice oversized Donruss that with a pocket on the top, so I don't think anybody's going to complain about getting in, getting a pocket. But I wanted to pull out a little lot of what you can see here. Um, the reason why I like this lot a lot is because, so this is just a random stack that I pulled out. Um, I saw Puckett's in here, I saw Herbacks in here, I saw a lot of Violas in here, Greg Gagne. Um, uh, mostly 80s and 90s, but what I really like about the lot is they tend to be different. So I'm not seeing uh, too many doubles, so you're not going to have a lot of, so here's the double, but you got, you got one double. Um, so instead of getting 25 1990 Fleer Greg Agnes, you might get a double every so often. Um, so I just kind of wanted to show that. 
this is very similar throughout the lot. Um, the way they, they have sorted them by player. So um, what you'll have is you'll have a bunch of Greg Agnes in a row. You'll have a bunch of Frank Violas in a row. I did mix them up a little bit, um, just um, getting them together. We went through them pretty quick. Um, we didn't uh, really search through them uh, too heavily. But now, now we got to Dan Gladden, so now Dan Gladden's up. Uh, again, here's, here's an Aaron double, um, another Aaron double. But again, you're not you're going to see a lot of um, 10 card, 10 of the same card in a row. Um, I don't think you'll have any card where you have even more than five. Um, there, there might be a little bit of that, but I, I doubt very much. So it's cool. It's a lot of um, a lot of different cards. Uh, these are great for uh, dealers at Twin Fest or resellers, or even if you're just a collector and you, you're trying to get, you know, every different Twin card ever made. This would be a really cool lot uh, to start with. Um, last up, um, I'm not gonna be able to show it on camera. Um, here, let's look at something fun instead of a blank uh, instead of a blank table. Um, so we got uh, large uh, wholesale lots of cards uh, split up by sport, baseball, basketball, football, hockey. We got a little bit of non-sport. Um, so those are bulk lots um, of cards that all came in collections in May. Um, when I was putting them together, so what I do is I open the box, I verify what sport it is so I can um, put it in the correct lot. I did see a number of stars and Hall of Famers. Um, uh, it's going to be very heavy 80s, 90s, but I did see some some cards that were in the last uh, five years in the um, in the basketball. There was some modern for sure, and in the baseball there was some modern, I believe. I don't know if there's any um, modern in the last five years in the football or not. Um, so. Check those out. Um, as always, uh, let me know if you have any questions. I will, I'm always available to answer them. Um, I do prefer email. Um, I'm very good at responding at email. So um, if you have any questions about an auction, please let me know and I'm happy to help. Thank you for watching the video and check out our auction. It will be, uh, the auction will be in the description and we'll have a link for you to go right there. Thank you.